Hi everyone, uh, my name is Doris Lee and I'm a product manager for Snowflake Notebooks. Snowflake Notebooks is an interactive environment where you can seamlessly explore, analyze, and visualize your data using Python and SQL. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use Snowflake Notebooks to build a machine learning model to predict churn at a telecommunications company. So let's get started. So I'm inside my Snowflake Notebooks now. I have it pulled up in SnowSight and one of the things I love about notebooks is that it comes with a set of convenient packages and I can also add my own packages from the Anaconda library. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to use the IMB Learn package as well as the Snowflake uh, Snowpark ML library. So I'm going to add these two libraries in my packages list on the top right hand corner and then I can start my session. Now you can see that with Snowflake Notebooks, it's really easy to connect to a session. You don't need to do any like pre-configuration. And then you also don't need to worry about packages. It's all done within this UI. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to run through a couple of SQL cells to pull in a set of Parquet files from a public S3 bucket. So what we first do is we want to create a stage that has a link to this S3 bucket. We also create a file format. And then if we do an LS on the stage, we can see this Parquet file that we need to load in. Now, the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to create a table based on this data, copy this Parquet data into my table. And finally, I'm going to run a select star query that allows me to preview the data that has been loaded into this table. And the data is displayed in this really nice streamlit format so that this is kind of an interactive data frame that I can, you know, scroll through. I can sort based on various columns. So this is a really nice way for me to interact with my SQL results. Now, this is really common in a, in a data science workflow where I, you know, I run some SQL queries, I have my data in a table, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to start hacking away at my data using Python. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import a bunch of our favorite data science libraries, pandas, numpy, and so on. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our Snowpark session. So you'll see an example of how this session information is used later in the tutorial. But essentially, this is a very easy way for me to configure my Snowpark session without having to enter in username or password or all the connection information that is necessary if you were to do this locally on, on your own notebook or with your own IDE. So Notebook provides a very convenient way for you to access your active session for Snowpark. Now, the next thing I want to do here is I want to fetch the results of this table that is returned from my SQL query as a Python object. And the way I can do this is I can reference cell nine. You can see here that this SQL cell is called cell nine. And then I'm going to convert that into a data frame. In this case, the return output is a Snowpark data frame. And Snowpark data frame is a really easy way for me to work with my data, perform some basic querying, perform exploratory data analysis on my data. So in this case, what I want to do on my Snowpark data frame is I can run the df.describe command, uh, which allows me to take a look at all the basic descriptive statistics associated with each of my columns. Um, in this case, you can see the mean, standard deviation, min, and max. This is a good way to get an overview of your data. The next thing I want to show you is you can also use pandas to work with your data and do some exploratory analysis. Um, and so in order to work with pandas, you can call this two pandas command, which essentially converts your Snowpark data frame into an in-memory object. So it pulls all the data into memory and converts it into pandas. 
And then after that, you can use your convenient sort of pandas command, such as dot is null, and the sum of that to check if there are null values in your columns. So you can see that in this data set, there is no null value, so we don't need to clean those up in my data. The next thing that I want to do is I want to take a look at the feature distribution of my data. And so I can use stringlet and altair to plot every single column. So essentially here I have a for loop through every single column of my data set, and then I'm using altair to plot the distribution. And so this is a very easy way, again, for me to get an overview of my distribution. Now, the goal of this tutorial is to predict user churn. And so obviously it's important to take a look at what is the distribution on churn. Um, and for this, we're going to run a group by query. And the group by query shows that there is, in this data set, there are a lot more rows for users that have not churned versus users that have churned. So what we say is that this data set is highly imbalanced. Um, we're going to fix that later on in the tutorial. But before we do that, uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is what is the difference between pandas data frames and Snowpark data frames? So going back to this, this group by query that we ran, with Snowpark data frames, everything is running directly on your data in Snowflake. Um, so Snowpark data frame queries and processes your data at scale. Uh, directly in Snowflake so that you can run these Python commands and it gets translated to SQL so that your data doesn't need to be pulled into memory. Now you can imagine that, you know, I'm working with a relatively small data set here, but if I have, you know, a, a massive data set, I'm working with very large data sets. This is a very easy way for me to work with my data at scale. So let's take a look at the performance results across using pandas and using Snowpark data frame. So the first one is running this command with Snowpark. And then the second command is I'm running this with pandas. And you can see that here, the time with pandas is, is longer than the one, the time that it takes to run the same command in Snowpark. And if we take a look at this even more, we, we actually Broke, out, broke down the timing to two phases. One is the two pandas command, and then the next is the actual pandas command of running the group by. And if we print out these time, you can actually see that more than 99% of the time that is spent in, in this query is actually on the two pandas command. That is telling us that the IO kind of the IO overhead for converting a Snowpark data frame and pulling all of that data into memory um, is the most costly step in our workflow. So if you remember earlier, with our group by query, one of the things that we learned was that uh, the data set here for the churn column is highly imbalanced. So this is where our IMB learn package comes in. The IMB learn package comes with an algorithm called SMOTE, which allows us to balance our data set by upsampling the data set. Um, so here, what we're doing is we are taking the original data set, and then we are using the SMOTE algorithm to fit and resample our data. So you can see this is the original data set, and this is the upsampled data set. This is just a preview of that. And then we're going to create a Snowpark data frame. Uh, note here, this is where the session information that we defined earlier comes in. I can use a session object to create a Snowpark data frame of my upsampled data. And then finally, I'm going to look at a preview of my upsampled data. So once all of that is done, we are now ready for other types of feature engineering and processing of, of my data set. And here I'm going to show you, again, two examples of what you can do in Snowflake Notebook. You can use scikit-learn, which is a very popular Python machine learning library, or you can use Snowpark ML for scalable machine learning pre-processing and modeling, which pushes all of the compute down to Snowflake so that all of these operations are running in Snowflake. 
So the first thing that we're going to show you is, is the vanilla scikit-learn approach. And here, what we're doing is we're using a standard scalar to transform our data. So this is very typical. You have your fit, and then you have your transform. And I have my scaled fate feature. I can do the same with Snowpark ML. And the way that I do that is, again, I can define a standard scalar. You can see here that I'm defining a standard scalar. I do the fit, and then I do the transform. The APIs between Snowpark ML and scikit-learn is, is very similar. So it's easy to move your code between scikit-learn and Snowpark ML. Now that I have my scaled features, I want to do train test split to split my data for training and testing. Um, so I do an 80, 20% split. And now that we've done all of this feature engineering work and cleaned up our data set, we are ready for the model training. And again, with the model training, you have the option of using your you know, scikit-learn or using Snowflake ML. In this case, we're going to demonstrate how you can use Snowflake ML to build a random forest classifier. Um, so you can see here that I am importing the random forest classifier, and then I'm creating a model with my input columns and my output columns specified. And, and then I'm going to do a fit and predict on my data set. And the fit step essentially trains the random forest classifier based on my training set. That is the 80% that, that I created uh, using the train test split earlier. You can see that the training here takes a little bit of time. And so once the training is completed, we can use the model that has been trained for prediction on our test set. We can run our prediction on this model on the testing set. And then now I can print out the testing result. And you can see that this column is the churn that is outputted as the prediction. The model has predicted 0 and 1 for various rows. So the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to evaluate our model and see how well our model is doing by comparing the predictions to the actual outcomes. We're going to store the results and the actual values from the train and the test set into these variable. And the first aspect that we're going to look at is feature importance. Feature importance is a really nice way of taking a look at all of my features and the weights that are associated with them. Um, so in this case, I can convert my Snowpark ML model to a scikit-learn model. And then I can use Altair to plot the feature importance of each of these variables. And we can see that contract renewal, monthly charges, these are the features that have the highest impact on churn. In this next example, what we can do is we can feed in the values of a hypothetical new user and use our model to predict churn. And so here we have the value of our hypothetical new user. We store it as a data frame. This is a single row data frame. And then let's take a look at our single row data frame. So it has all of these feature values. We use the scalar that we had earlier to transform our feature. Because remember, we've done some feature engineering on our data. And then finally, we use the model that we've trained to predict churn. I mean, you can see that here, the churn is zero. Um, and I'm going to print out both the scaled data frame as well as the prediction, right? So the prediction is zero, so it's no churn. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I did this on a single hypothetical user. But I really want to kind of model this behavior and take a look at like what happens to my churn when I vary these different feature values. So what I can do is I can use a streamlet to build an interactive data app that allows me to sort of modify these feature values. And you can see that this app is rerunning and, and doing this prediction so that you can look at the prediction output. 
Um, and here I've also printed out the input and the scaled data frame just so that we can have a better understanding of our model. And this data app consists of both slider value, which I can change and modify the different values, as well as drop down. So I can make these changes and see if my output changes based on that. Um, so this is a very easy way for you to build a Streamlit app, interact with your model, and get a better sense of how the changes in your feature impacts the ultimate prediction. Now we've done a lot in this, in this tutorial. And finally, what I want to do is I want to store my model result as a pickle file so that, you know, if I come back to the notebook later, or if I am running this elsewhere, I can use this pickle file and I don't have to retrain my model. So great. This is an example of how you can do some exploratory analysis, build a machine learning model, and use that to predict churn using Snowflake notebooks. OK, so that's it. In this demo, we took a look at how you can explore, visualize uh, your data, do some feature engineering, uh, and build a machine learning model, and putting all of this together in an interactive uh, Streamlit data app. If you like this video, be sure to click on this playlist uh, to check out more videos on notebooks in this channel. As always, please like and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for the latest video on how you can power up your data workflows with Snowflake. See you in the next video.